Hey, CalJax team. So this is the third video of the teacher exchange facilitation process uh, example videos that, we, that we've put together. Now, so you should have already seen the first one, which is the, the pre-observation discussion. And then you saw kind of what happens in the classroom observation itself. But this is the final part. This, this part, the, the post-observation or the debriefing, whatever you want to call it, this is by far the most powerful. What I want you to understand is that your job is to help facilitate connections and conversations. You don't have to worry about all the details of, of the how-tos. That's what we here at the at the Calhoun ISD and the Jackson ISD, that's what we can help you or help take care of. Your per the reason we want you as part of this conversation is so that you can guide those connections. You can help the teachers that have just been in the classroom to start to think about how they could use those ideas and some of the things that they saw in their own classroom. And we also really want those conversations to happen. Ideally, what happens in, in this is your teachers spend an entire hour sharing ideas, sharing examples, sharing uh, what's worked and what hasn't for them, and you just kind of sit back and relax. Now, there's going to be that doesn't happen on its own. There's some things that you're going to need to do to make that happen. But this, like I said, this is by far the most powerful piece of this entire program. So what I want to do is this video is going to show the entire discussion. I, I really debated about whether or not to go in and kind of chop it up but what I wanted to do is is watch let you watch the entire thing and see how the conversation evolves and here's here's what I want you to look for you know it's working when teachers start asking each other's each other questions and start sharing ideas now in this case it kind of it that didn't happen until about part way or about halfway through but when it does happen once again that's where this whole process becomes very powerful. Now in this case, Nate, who was the host teacher, he was able to be part of that debriefing discussion. Now that is the ideal scenario. He was able to give some insights and really help start that, that sharing process. Um, but like I said, that's the ideal situation. Sometimes you might not be able to, to get your host teacher to be able to take another hour to be part of the conversation. If you can't, no worries. There's still gonna be ways for you to, to lead that, that conversation. And we'll talk more about that later. So for now, sit back, relax, and watch how the conversation unfolds. Nate, we want to thank you so much oh, for having no us into was, your room today. Was, it was, really with it, so. it was uh, absolutely wonderful, and Good. we had a great time Good. observing your Thank classroom. you guys for coming in. I know you guys traveled quite a way, so yeah. appreciate it. So we took a little bit of time mm -hmm. while um, while you were getting your sub settled and, sure. and um, about a 10 minute interve uh, intervening period in between and we came back and we looked at some individual reflections, mm -hmm. took some time to process all the things that we had seen in your classroom. Mm -hmm. And then I just want to refer everybody back to the norms on the agenda. Um, we want to have a collaborative discussion about our observations in Nate's room. Um, in order to do that, I think we want to make sure that everybody's voice is heard. So I think we'll just start at one point and kind of go around the table. We're going to ask you to contribute some of the things that you noticed. What did you wonder? Um, what you, you found that maybe you could tie in your own room? And we'll kind of start the discussion that way. That way everybody has a voice and an opportunity to speak. Um, and just wanted to, to show you those norms again so for the conversation. So the first thing that I'd like to do is start with um, what did you notice? And you can say one or two things. It would be really good if, like, if I say um, I noticed uh, the kids grabbing their Chromebooks and then typing in and having some a little bit of difficulty with um, they weren't quite getting that they had to actually go back and read the QR codes for a little bit until they um, pressed them then it'd be nice if you didn't say that same thing. Do you see what I mean? Like, we'll can try to contribute something different as we go around the table, and then we'll ask at the end if anybody else has anything to contribute, if that, if that works. So uh, that's what I noticed. Um, and I, I'm going to add one other thing that I noticed. I noticed that the students in the sixth grade class really responded well to the activity part of getting up with the QR codes, that making just that physical brain gym type of activity um, as part of the lesson. I was really impressed um, with that. So um, what did you notice? Um, I, I did notice that the kids were very comfortable collaborating with each other, mm -hmm. um, helping each other with grammar, punctuation, yeah. um, how do you spell that? 
um, what, what am I supposed to do? So right. just, they didn't ask you, right. they asked each other, and I liked that. Yeah, that's kind of a culture I put in early in the year, because I was at three before me, you know, you guys have these great devices, these tools, mm -hmm. use them, you know, it's, it's not just for flappy birds, it's, you know, so I try to ingrain that, but thank you, yeah. Anything else that you know? Um, and that, uh, obviously, in any classroom, you're going to have students at varying skill levels yeah. typing, you know, one girl typing like this, and mm -hmm. another one done, yeah. can type really fast, so, um, you know, just yeah, that class is very varying in skill level. I mean, I have some seventh graders in there that are very low. Right. And I have some sixth graders in there that are pretty high. So that was a, mm -hmm. and that was a good observation on your part because I do have some varying levels in there. Right. Well, you do in any classroom, but um, you know, it was nice to see it, it being Google Classroom and they can go back and revisit it, and you know, you don't have to submit right. it now. Let's <laughs> great. What did you notice? Um, I noticed the students were on task. That like, I don't have to get yelled at for video games or yeah. you know that's from I'm in one to one and it's amazing how it's knock it off, knock it off, knock it off, knock it off. Just constantly walking around going back mm -hmm. to I'm not supposed to be doing that, I'm not supposed to be doing that. So uh, that was awesome. I was, there is hope for me, I guess. That's <laughs> possible. Um, so I was really, I really liked that. And then um, what else was curious to me is kids, hey, walk around and use your phones or your device. And they came back and then they did their thing and they just put them away. That's a completely different culture than what I'm used to because it would be kids that still have them out and yeah. trying to do them. And I teach eighth graders, so not in that well, much. Well, you know, the thing, funny thing that you bring that up is we had an issue with that. I'm the only teacher in this whole school that lets kids bring devices into the classroom. But I treat it like guns in the old west. I don't care if you have them, I gotta see them out. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you saw a lot of kids put them on the corner of the desk face down. Yeah. And that's why, I think that's why, because in other classes, I think they had that issue because they were like, I don't see it. I mean, that old school mentality, yeah. train of thought, where I'm like, I'm gonna bring them, I'm gonna bring them in. And I wish every kid had a Twitter account, use Twitter nonstop. But sixth grade really young for that. But right. yeah. Interesting. Okay, very cool. Thank you, Patrick, for sharing Thank what you, you noticed. And then what did you notice? Uh, I noticed that there were many levels for learning and the technology was included in, you know, along each level, which is really cool to see. So I know the focus had to do with vocab acquisition, but there was also the uh, paragraph structuring and also um, researching or considering what the author's feelings were and giving evidence. So there were all of these different layers just in one lesson and kids were able to use the QR codes in the Google Classroom and the Chromebooks for all of that. Right. So that was really cool um, to see. I also heard the kids talking about what you, I think, wanted them to talk about. So they were, you know, dialoguing about um, different vocab words. Like one of the tables that was here some of the kids said, you know, are you going to use the word imaginative? <laughs> and they were discussing sure. that. So it was cool to see them picking up the vocab yeah. from the lesson. That's good to hear that. I didn't hear that. <laughs> 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 right. yeah. so they, were, they were working together on the word imaginative. So good, good. I, okay. um, I noticed, I was really impressed with how seamless everything just kind of went. Mm -hmm. um, you definitely have procedures in place for getting, getting things out and, and setting up partners and just kind of how, how students should move around the room and things and they were real solid on, I mean I, I worked with the second through fifth so sometimes I still okay ladies and gentlemen it's time for us to log off. Right. And we do that by going here, clicking on this, you know, and so forth. So there wasn't any of that. You know, sure. It was it was so seamless and just really yeah, it kept around task like you said and it was just it was a pleasure to watch. Yeah. But I was also really happy to see too that when I when I give kids a response a writing response. I have to go back through and I have to re-explain yeah. three different times. <laughs> just like, do you not? How are you not? So I'm, I'm glad to see it's not just me because I was starting to wonder. If yeah, I was I, I, that's something new <laughs> we've just tried to do this year, and that was kind of our language. One of our language arts goals was to pose a question that really is no definite answer. That is language arts. There is no yeah. definite to everything, and so that's kind of a struggle for some of them. But some of them picked it right up and nailed it. Some of them like, we're talking about the book. You know, yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. which is good because I think they're starting to learn now. So mm -hmm. I mean, I can definitely see a huge jump from even December to now, even when something's off. So good. Good. 
Anything else that anybody wants to add, just that you um, that you noticed while you were observing? Anything else that stands out? In I know so, some of the Chromebooks didn't charge overnight, so I know that's... Yeah, they're supposed to be pulled in here and plugged in. Okay. Whoever used them last history pulled so them in here. Didn't plug them in. So that's how, okay, so the, you know, the cards, okay. Now, I don't sure if the stadium is going to work. No, the, we have three cards for the building, and okay. two of them are on that side. They're supposed to be done here any time, and uh, they're supposed to bring here and plug in. And get <laughs> Yeah. Anything else that anybody noticed in the observation? The kids seemed like pretty willing to share their own personal devices too. Mm -hmm. that, that's pretty common. Yeah, that's a culture that I've, I've installed in the kids. I'm like, here's my, I'm like, use my phone and some mm -hmm. guys had and yeah. things like that. And I'm usually, about, usually you know, a couple of kids, usually it's yesterday. Who doesn't have a device? Only two kids. But one girl, I forgot, mom and brother needed it. So, and I had another kid asked yesterday. So. It does add up a little bit, but yeah, they're, they're usually pretty good about that. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to um, what did you wonder about as you were watching the observation, or now that you've had a little bit of time to think about and process the conversation, um, what did you wonder about? One of the things that I wondered about is, um, I think I would like to use QR codes in my own room, but I'm not quite sure how to go about um, splitting out the paragraphs and attaching each one to a QR code. So that was what I was wondering as I was watching and, and um, looking as how, how could I use the QR card? Maybe not in the same way for ordering, um, but how could I do that? So, okay. so what did you wonder? Um, I guess one of the things I wondered was how you manage the um, bring your own device no, because I, like Patrick had said, I have the trouble with um, kids teaching high school. They're constantly on them, and it's always for something that's... Yeah, high school, I think it's a little bit different animal. We're down here, I'm still... <laughs> I need an eighth grade different animal. Because I do teach a seventh grade class now, but they're actually pretty productive. The one thing I told them, I said, if I catch you on a game, it's mine. I take it, and my parents don't get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I keep it, you cut it. And no way I'm getting back to you if your parents don't get it from me. Because now the parent's mad that <laughs> they have to come in and get a delay, so. So that was one of the things that I wondered, but um, I'd like more information um, about how you're using Google Classroom. And, um, I tried right at the beginning, they put Google Classroom out there, and it didn't seem real friendly. So it'd be nice to see sure. the other side of things. Yeah, absolutely, you know, I, I use got, it I'm asking lot, the kids, yeah. you know, where do you turn it down? Show me what you're doing, yeah. and, and they're, um, they were, you know, good at showing that, yeah. but I would like to see the teachers. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, so, well, I, I love using it, so I, yeah, I'd be happy to share. Well, why don't you talk a little bit about the QR codes? Okay. How you came sure. to because this is the second time you've done QR codes, and then talk a little bit about your history with Google Classroom, and then we'll come back to Patrick. And sure. Continue okay. For QR it, codes, I just go to what's called QR stuff, and you can do a website, um, and you can see there's a little bulletin board next to the drinking fountain that I made for our principal where it has our Facebook little QR code, uh, her Twitter account the QR code, and her blog, I think, the QR code. Um, I just came up with it because I thought, I thought it was easy, it was simple, I could do it with scavenger hunts, and so I mean, for my language arts classes, when we're doing a little bit of grammar things that we do, um, especially with pronouns, which is a lot of kind of core stuff, I'll do the scavenger I'll put them all the way up and down these halls, and they have to scan one, and then they have to read the clue a certain way to find where the next one is, and once they, then they have to, I send them to one teacher, they have to, it's kind of like the amazing, right, they have to say a certain phrase in order to get that right, and they That's come to me and they get a prize, and, and they oh love gosh. it, I mean, they're up on the hall, and I say, you can't talk about this, and I was going to hear it, and so they, then you, see, you know, and I even say, you guys can text each other, so now I'm incorporating texting, so I mean, a couple kids, can you two different? Sure, I said, but do it on these hashtags, I could take it doing So every time they would tweet each other, uh, yeah. under a hashtag, and other kids, I was like, but if you use Twitter, other kids find a hashtag, they're going to follow your, your clues. I was like, oh, yeah, so then they're trying to throw each other off the scent. I mean, they turned into a game within a game. So, But QR clothes is something I just, I, I don't know where I discovered it. I found it probably at a Mackel conference or something, God, probably four or five years ago. And I started really incorporating it three years ago. Um, and the kids know this is how we do a lot of our stuff. You know, when I do a Google form for quick, like, I can statement type quiz, I usually just put it right up on my projector and things walk up being answered three or four questions with their I cans. And, I mean, it, it's pretty, it's almost second nature to the kids in my room to our code. It really is. And as for the Google Classroom, um, 
don't know. I, I just, I mean, I don't know how I got started with that. I just knew it was coming out, and I started talking to a person from Google who was actually part of the developing team of that, and he was emailing me back and forth. And so anytime I had a question, I'd go right to the source, and he's like, "Oh, I do this, this, and this," and I don't know. So he's like emailing back and forth on some Google Classroom stuff, but. It's come a long way since August. Yeah, okay. It's come a long way since August. Um, I use it, at first I was trying to put a Google Form on there, and the kids were like, what are we turning it in at? And I'm like, oh, you don't. So I started to learn, oh, if I do a Google Form, I do it as an announcement. Okay. And, if I, and I even do my language arts, my major essay writings, I'm using Google Classroom, and then they're able to go, and I, I'm able to see who's turned it in. Then I use um, Dr. Puss and Gruber to grade it, and that incorporates real nicely with Google Classroom, very nicely with Google Classroom. So I use it a lot. I still use my Weebly because that's more user friendly for parents. Um, that, that, I use Weebly not just for announcements or uh, kids ask me about my Weebly. Oh, here's what we did. Check my Google Classroom and go to Google Classroom. But most of my assignments are stored right in Google Classroom. Can, can you re um, order things now on, on there? Like I was putting things in and they were. Um, Always at the bottom, and I would like oh, want I, I had something, and then the I or no, they'd be at the top, and then so I want to like put my first part of the semester back at the top, and I couldn't do that. Oh, I don't, I've never okay. had to do that. Okay. That's a good question. Okay. I don't that know. That's a great question. Yeah. You know yeah. what? Too at the end of the day, we're going to exchange emails, or we'll make sure everybody oh, has yeah, the contact sure. information. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If you could, if you were part of that collaboration, Patrick, that you were looking for at the beginning of the day. Mm -hmm. um, if you would ask your guy that you email yeah, that absolutely. question on yeah. how to do that and then email the rest of us, yeah, I think for that sure. would be a great I never thought about having to do that, but high school, I could see where that would be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Change yeah. 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 And you're giving them a chance to go back here and look at things from the beginning, especially for a spy review mm -hmm. for an exam or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Excellent. Well, thank you, Nate, for oh, sharing yeah, that absolutely. stuff. Yeah. Um, Patrick, what did you wonder as you were looking at the observation? Um, I'm kind of, um, I looked at Google Classroom extensively. Part of the issue I have with it is the domain that the students use is penfieldstudent.net and teachers use penfield.net so they don't talk to each other so I have to create a whole new yeah, an account. Issue. So I haven't used Classroom yet so I was, I was nice to actually see you guys able to not have to worry about that and actually have the kids using uh, Classroom because it, it looks kind of like what I do already with Google Docs, I just kind of mm -hmm. manage it away with it for like, Sure, so, for sure. I, don't, I, liked it. I was really wondering about Google Classroom and it's from Lionel before. Um, now, when they were looking at the vocab terms from the writings, I didn't actually look at what was said. Were those words that you had looked at previously, like you talked the day before, like you know, were talking about alliteration or imagination? Nope, or not at all. Just, no, we've been working on pulling things out of text to put back into writing to show evidence. Okay. That's what we've so been working on, okay. because that was a standard, and that's yeah. something we've been trying to work on as a language arts department. It's such a high-level skill for that, is. for sixth grade. Yes, yeah. it is. It, I, we've been working on it in my language arts class, but I'm kind of using my informational reading class to help reinforce <laughs> some of that. So I, I just used it today, and I've done it in the past, too, but I'm like, what word in there? And then I wanted them to use some of their imagination, so when it said, um, I think the word was imaginative or whatever, what? What is imaginative to you compared to what the author thinks imaginative is? Mm -hmm. My imaginative is probably different than your imaginative, you know, when it comes to Harry Potter, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just, yeah, I, I didn't go over any of those terms with them at all. We haven't talked much about that at all. I know they talk a lot of it heavily in seventh grade, um, but I, no, I don't need any of that. I just wanted to be able to go back in and look at something that was the author's words for those paragraphs to pull back in to tell me that, they, that the author liked the book. Mm -hmm. And then, um, since we're kind of looking at uh, getting ready for online assessments, how useful do you think today's lesson was to get kids ready for smarter, not smarter, that was the M step, step, whatever it is now, uh, smarter balance of another name. How is that going to prepare? <laughs> I'm hoping Is that, that even an issue of thought for you? Or you yeah, just, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 it has to be. I mean, we're all teaching, it has to be a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to prepare the best because that is ultimately how we're all judged. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at it as, okay, what skill have they used on the meet in the past? All these other standardized testing they've done in the past, what other skill have they used? It was pulling in words from what they've read. It was um, transition words, looking what, you know, paragraphs should go where, things like that. So I try to use that as part of that. But the major thing I was trying to accomplish today was think outside the box, 
we'll, we'll add a question and then pull some words from paragraphs to tell me that the, that proved to you that the author liked that book. I think um, <clears throat> Andrew, what um, what did you notice, or, or I'm sorry, what did you wonder during the observation? Um, so one thing turned the other, and then and, and you were talking to a team of students yeah. too, and asking them, um, how will you know as a teacher that they got it? You go through and you get to see what they wrote, and the kids were saying that you will leave comments on the oh, paper, yeah, and then yeah. they can use those suggestions or not use them or whatever. So that's yeah, in Google Classroom, it says on the side, done and not done. Yeah. So you just click the done, and it lists who's done. You click on the paper and open it up. That is, I read it, I'll, I'll highlight something, go, hey, this is called an or hey, what is, you didn't tell me what a magic it is to you here, and things like that. Most of the kids were showing me, and I was reading on the spot, I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good, so I'll go through and read it. Oh, yeah, I, that, I read that one already, I remember that. But the students who did turn it in, I'll be able to go, well, here, you know, I'll give them some feedback through the comments. Okay. I think, can I? Yeah, yeah. Uh, awesome. The comment section, because I know, like, in Google Docs, we can use it. Is, do they still have, like, uh, something like rectify? So if, you leave me yeah. a comment, and yeah. I can yep. comment. And I can actually, comment it's called resolved, and then resolved. Yep. And then I actually get an email that says, so, okay. "Someone's all yeah. resolved." I'm just sure that yeah. was built into that. Yeah. How often do you let them? So once you've given the suggestion, and then they make the corrections, is that an ongoing process? No, I always say I always just fix, fix these things. So there's some things they'll, they'll mess up that I haven't caught yet. So I always go back and say, I'll just focus on. All right, I know they should know this. Fix this. Then the other stuff, and that's how actually I started. When I especially when I do my essays on my arts class, I look at man, it's a huge kind of mistake they're all making. That's my next grammar piece. Commas are all over the place. They're not ending with question marks, or they're not indenting. So that's my next grammar piece. Sometimes mm -hmm. is going off with writing. So. Um, I was also wondering, I put this down as an idea to steal, I got all excited. Um, <laughs> I saw you had the QR code up on the bulletin board with your ICANN statements mm -hmm. and your objectives, and when I scanned it, it took me to the Google form. Mm -hmm. Did the kids use that to self-assess, or is that something that's that for me? Use yeah, that tells me, okay, where are we at? So, um, I look at they it that? They come in every up. time I do a new unit, like I'm starting something new. Like, we just had finished... Um, what was in there? I can't remember. Um, I can't remember what we just did. It was before, it was before break. That's why. <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah, whatever you scan, it was right before break. And so they actually took that test on the Thursday before we left for break. Okay. Um, that, that I can. So now I, I compared it to what they did before, compared to what they did after. I, you know, during, I looked, the first time I do it, I looked at the ICANN. Right, who's my ones? Who knows their stuff? Then I kind of chunk them in and say, all right, some of you ones talk to the twos and help them out because maybe kid language is something that just clicks with them. Now the twos will be a one. Then I'll sit with a group of threes and try to bring them to twos or ones just from me sitting with them a little bit more or reiterating some things a little bit more, teaching one more thing. So that's your pre and post data. Exactly, exactly what it is, yes. And I do it for each. And, I mean, as, that was from Miss O'Neill, our principal. That was her push for this year. Was, Let's do what I can. At first, I'm like, I want more thing to do, but I'm like, no, okay, now I get why. I mean, now that I've done it, I understand why it's a good thing. So. I'd like to see that. Yeah, I'd like to hold that up just to see. Yeah, we can go in and scan it. Yeah. It's on the farthest bullet board underneath the flag. I saw it. Okay. I didn't, yeah. didn't make that. Didn't take my yeah, Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So each objective there had a, a one, two, or three. So Correct. Like, but, so they rate know. themselves, but they don't have to prove that they. Well, through, through the assessment, like when I gave them the okay. quiz at the end. Uh -huh. That told me, okay, he said that he knew it, but he got 22% for this. Uh -huh. okay. But I tell him, hey, tell me the truth. I mean, I'm not going to grade you on no. this. I'm grading you on this. If you don't know it, I can help you. And it's, they've been pretty good so far. I mean. So it's just a number of self assessment. Yeah, it, it's more for me. It's more for yeah, the no, teacher's I, side. No, yeah. But it does help the kids. It is a high, it's a high leverage strategy. Oh, yeah. Kids yeah, absolutely. Progress, so. Really interesting. Okay, cool. Nicole, what did you um, wonder during the observation? And I noticed that you said a few times um, you can finish this at home or you can do this at home. How many, do you know how many kids actually have internet? Not a lot. Not a lot, yeah. yeah. That, was, really? that was my big hang up too. That's why I said after school program. I, I said, yep. What's, it's Tuesday, what can we do on Tuesdays? And mm -hmm. they can say after okay. school, of course, you use Chromebooks or whatever here in school. So. Yeah. Yeah. Then. You'd be surprised how many kids even that do have it at home. I've struggled at 
parents email you, especially in here, they don't have a young Google classroom at home. Yeah. And when they get on here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. there's nothing different. So I, just, choosers. I literally had a day today in September, my student teacher and I, we both just said, all right, log off, log back on, somebody do it, log off, log back on, somebody do it. Mm -hmm. Then I would throw my again on the projector. We literally took a day. Yeah. Luckily, my student teacher, because he was doing one side of him, I was working the other, and we were able to get through it. But mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, it, it's a struggle. It really, um, with the internet at home, it's. And we found, because we always did like the same survey who has internet at home? Like 98% of the kids would say, we have it. And then I'm like, but why aren't you doing the work? And well, I can't see it on my phone. All right. So then we asked again, what Who percentage of kids actually is using a phone versus a tablet or a computer? Exactly. Well, I use my sister's boyfriend's phone when he comes over and all the screen. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's, I know. That's, that's the same thing here. That's exactly the same thing. No, you're, it's not just being able to connect, it's being able to I mean, I read a thing for you the other day that there was a, in California, I want to say, they're actually taking old school buses, making it a Wi Fi station, pulling into trailer parks, and just hitting it so kids can have Wi Fi at home for a certain amount of hours a day. That's, that's cool. Okay, anything else that anybody thought of or you want to come back to? Anything that you wondered as you were observing or through the observation or now that you've had some processing time? Anything else that you wondered about? I kind of asked um, the one kid I was talking to, but I think he was one of the brighter kids of the bunch. So okay. often, so kids get, start using the tech in like fifth grade, he was saying, they kind of started using Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. So is that typical? So how, do you, how have you noticed kids who come in from a different district come in and do with compared to the rest of your kids. Not good. Um, I think the kid you were talking he he struggled at first. Mm -hmm. I mean he of course logins were different and he'd be frustrated with that and I was getting frustrated. I'm like, it's the same you know, here it is, yeah. I wrote it out for you. you know, just, <laughs> I was like, get your phone, take a picture of it. You know, and just that way you'll have it and it was a struggle at first. Um, but I think our culture here is starting to change where now kids are saying, Oh, it's just it's, we're pretty universal with our the last year, so it's pretty universal on how our email addresses are set up for the yeah. kids. They can go, well, it's your first few letters, your first few letters, it's your birthday at myschools.org, and so then the kids start to understand. But we're really good, the kids are really good around here, and the culture the teachers are made um, of helping each other, and you guys saw that in there, I and mean, they're really good at, they don't have an issue with working each other, and I credit a lot of the fifth grade teachers, they do a lot of things like that, mm -hmm. so. All right, back on to our individual reflections and planning then. Um, I want to go around and hear what are some successes that you've had in your classroom related to the focus of the exchange. Our focus today was vocabulary acquisition through technology integration. And um, one of the successes in the past that I had in my classroom is I used to do a root word of the day. But again, it was limited resources. And so we had a computer lab. We didn't have devices in the classroom. And we would take them down twice a week or not twice a week, once every two weeks, um, to then research that root word in multiple areas. So I looked at that kind of as, as mm -hmm. being really similar, um, but minus those QR codes, because mm -hmm. that wasn't around. Right, right. wasn't so a thing. It right. wasn't a thing, and, and um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so I have had success like that, and I think that I could adapt different components of what I saw today. So what are some successes you had, either with the focus or with the technology or with anything that we saw today? Do you, have you had a similar experience in your own teaching or your own classroom that you can draw meaning or make a connection with what we saw today with Nate? Um, for me, um, in terms of vocabulary and, and technology, just using programs like Quizlet and things. Mm -hmm. I teach like anatomy and that's Oh, anatomy. sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Memorization um, big. Yeah, huge. But I, um, I started a, like a, a bulletin board of QR codes with crazy science questions. Oh, and okay. take it to take them to a, a video that sure. answered it, and yeah. then they're using it to, um, you know, for extra credit. Like, tell me what that was about. Can you answer it? Can sure. you tell your friend or whatever? Um, so I, I like maybe incorporating that more. I really liked the QR thing. So. It's just an easy way to. Yeah, I wish I could. Instant interaction. Like I, I wish more kids were on Twitter because I'd like to use that. That way, kids can all follow a certain hashtag and sure. see what the, you know. But I could also do it off a blog. I mean, there's mm -hmm. ways, other ways to do it for younger kids. Mm -hmm. so. But high school kids, kids love fight Twitter and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's something I would like to look more into. Yeah, I think this uh, it's good to see just kind of how things are um, being utilized. And I like that. 
it would be nice to have more time like with the teacher through this program like hey can we right you know sit with you and see like Everything I do is online. What subject are you? U.S. history. Oh, okay. So, um, and I found for vocabulary specific is I found a Google slide template that allows um, it's set up form. They have 30 slides, and it has on the upper right hand corner it's like write your understanding. So, like there's that self reflection piece, mm -hmm. and then you have to add an image and you have to put the definition in the words. Oh, cool. So, <clears throat> I found that way a lot better than. Here's your 30 terms. Yeah. Here's a pencil yeah. and pen. Oh, good luck. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I found that way to work well. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. I can share the Yeah. I'm for sure. Yeah. I like to use that. That's how I would like to use. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then what I was thinking, some of the, like that one kid I was talking to was done early, and I was thinking, oh, you should go to freerice.com and then, you know look at vocab words right. that way, and also it's helpful too to get a little kids showing them that they you know. Yeah. Um, I think like quiz that you said, and also, uh, do the kids blog at all? Like, no, it's because we don't have the Chromebooks every day. And, okay, yeah. you know, just little things like that. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, when the kids were submitting so, like similar reflections, and thinking about my classroom, when the kids would probably put on their blog, and then how I see your blog with your students and things like that. So and the reason I got frustrated with blogs, not frustrated, it is not the blog's fault. It's my fault and the kids' fault. Is I did a couple years ago with the current eighth graders. And I was becoming really frustrated because they were writing like they were texting. They thought it was okay to write like they're texting now, and that drove me insane. <laughs> and I mean, I, that's one of my things. Don't I'm not your buddy. Don't text me. You're not. I mean, yeah. talk to me like I'm an adult, and that was one of my emphasis. But I had to shut down the blog because it was getting ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, it was C U Z and four and R U. No. <laughs> so I mean, that's why I. Got away from blog. It's just something I didn't have time to stress on. Yeah. So, and they thought it was okay because it's a social network. Yeah. They're thinking that it's okay to type like that. It's not. <laughs> this is an educational forum. What challenges have you had to do? Um, um, or success, successes? I'm sorry. Yep. I also had Quizlet for online mm -hmm. okay, on my students. Yeah, Quizlet's great. Playing oh, the yeah. games that go along with it, um, and then Google Classroom. That's something I've used a lot this year, and I. When you were talking about, you know, go to Weebly versus, it's like a sentence right out of my mouth yeah. on a daily basis. Yeah, it is. Wait, how do you manage, um, you know, where they're where they're going like that? Well, the ones, kid Tyler, uh, uh, I don't, you call them. it's not there. You're on Weebly, it's on classroom. Weebly. Uh, you're on Weebly, it's on classroom. I, I mean, every day you get so frustrated, almost, you're on the wrong spot! <laughs> I think it sounds like we have a similar, because I have, um, Weebly has a lot of my resources, and so kids can visit exactly. that to find the notes and the PowerPoint. That's how I use, I use is, is that part of my assignments are in classroom. Google classroom. Right. Yeah, and that's what we do. Can't you use Google Classroom like a Weebly? Yes. It's but just I, that you the get parents, the parents, the problem is our school is trying to stay universal. Uh -huh. well, I'm like the only one using Classroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's driving me insane, but I'm impatient. <laughs> um, but everybody else, we, 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 we. So, yeah. of course, all the teachers leave the sites will listen on our district website. Mm -hmm. So, what do parents do? Mm -hmm. Go to Weebly. We're the same way with Moodle. Everyone's kind of mm -hmm. Moodle. So. Right. Like, you know, I usually just use Moodle as a way to deliver stuff. And right. And that's, I mean, in the years past, before, I mean, last year, I usually Weebly did not stop. That was mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now with class, we're trying to mm -hmm. wean towards that more because I can use the add ons and things yeah. so Thanks. much more user friendly. And, mm -hmm. yeah. It's now on my. Weebly, I have a link to Google Classroom and a link to Moodle, <laughs> but it's all there. It's on all the house. Yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. No, I, I feel your pain. <laughs> Successes or similar um, experiences that you've had? Um, no, just uh, I had my 
my students write online, or you know, either using. I just introduced Google Docs to third grade. Oh wow! Good, That's awesome. good for you. That, is awesome. yeah. that works. <laughs> That's a challenge in itself. Yeah. Wow. yeah. That's um, awesome. And with fourth grade, I, I taught them. I had them share a document with a friend, and then co you know write write something together. You know, just writing a scary story. Or something right. Like that. So that that was really that was fun. Oh, good for you. That's a big jump. <laughs> yeah. Well, it yeah. Um, but I only see him once a week, so oh, it's it's already kind of, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to still try and figure. That's my job. I'm still trying to figure out what I can accomplish in a year if I only see him once a week for a half an hour, or an hour. Sure, or something sure. Like that. Um, but yeah, with me on the writing online thing, I think it's really important. And I'm also I noticed too that a lot of your students don't use proper you know touch typing technique, and and that's fine with me. I mean, but a lot of a lot of the other and I'm just like, no, we have to have them type correctly and stuff. And I'm just, you know, I don't, I don't know what's yet. Well, that. you know, I talked to my cousin about that because you know, he was on a blood pressure day. He told me, I'm so used to the iPad when I'm out in the field. He's in sales. Mm -hmm. He was at home doing this over break, but he was running the film on the iPad. I'm so used to, you know, yeah. He goes, it just, he goes, it just became a habit. Yeah. He, he said, he was like, we're not tight. Mm -hmm. He goes, it's just a habit. So. Yeah. Okay, let's go back around and talk about challenges um, or questions that you have maybe about your own current practices. So um, I talked before a little bit about the QR codes. I'd like to bring those into my classroom with root or base words. Um, but I would like at the high school level for the students to self-create their own. I want the kids to come up with their own QR codes, attach those to the, to the vocabulary, and then somehow do an exchange. Mm -hmm. But I would have to develop the rubric for what would that yeah, look like successfully line, sure. so that they would, would be able to do that. So that would be one of my um, challenges, would have to, to have enough QR code knowledge mm -hmm. to be able to create the rubric on which they could um, self-track their own progress sure. on where they're, they're mm -hmm. going with it. But I would like to do that where it's more... Um, at the higher level, you know, not with third grade, but with. <laughs> sure, yeah, 9, 10, 11, 12 grade, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to focus more on technology as the focus here. Um, that it just uh, it seems like, I know there's that pyramid of like, are you using technology to enhance the lesson or as a you know, an add-on or something. Right. I don't or know. Just, to just, like, just, just to use it. Just to use it. Right. Just to, you know, for, for something. So, um, I guess the, one of the challenges is how do you, mm -hmm. you know, are you using the right things? Where's the time to, like, figure all this stuff out? Because I get, like, so creative, like, all summer long, oh, getting everything figured and out. And you don't well, yeah. And then I come into the classroom and I'm like, oh. Yeah, you know, reality. Like yeah. establishing yeah. establishing the procedures or establishing the expectations for, for what students need to do it, or just more like really which platforms I'm using. I kind of um, I jump a lot. Just like, stay you know, organized. Edmodo yeah. or this or that. Yeah. You know, um, at, you know what are some things that really work in a high school classroom? Mm -hmm. So that's I guess where do you find the time to? That out. I don't know if that's really a good focus for No, I think it's fantastic. I mean, that's where I'm feeling well, absolutely yeah. fantastic. I think this yeah, is form is all, for, yeah. This is yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much out there. Yeah, I, I think what I just did is I just like, here's where I am. Here's where I know the best. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going with. You know, then I started talking to Anthony and all right, where do we want to go with the district? Because mm -hmm. I don't want to do something out here in the district over here. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, let's try the mainstream here. So I, I had kind of where I went with it. Mm -hmm. And then I just started, you know, practicing and studying that one area, and I am going to use Google, but it was Weebly, now I'm starting to use more mm -hmm. Google stuff, so yeah. It is a real challenge when you're out in front of some of this stuff to, right. yeah. to be the only one. I've heard that from a couple of, you know, it, that's a very difficult challenge when you're the one, um, you know, years ago I was the only one in a whole building who had a website, the right. only one. And then, you know, the parent, well, why doesn't everybody have that? Well, I can't. That's a great question. <laughs> That's a fantastic question, you know. So, so right. yes, it's hard. And then, like you said, too, the time of, you know, just like you're doing now, it's moving from as the platforms change and we get more and more new tools, mm -hmm. and then taking that time to figure out, is this a better platform of Google right. Classroom, or do I still want to stick with Weebly as a housing or, or Edmodo mm -hmm. because of District or Moodle? Sure. I, I mean, those are definitely realistic challenges that, that we face. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I think it moves so fast that admin doesn't even think about it. Yeah. I think it just goes right over their head like, <laughs> you know, I, I have no idea what you're talking about because they're worried about X, Y, and Z yeah. and yes. reports right. and, right. I mean, this is like, I think they rely heavily on, you know, some of the teachers and, you know, people like, you know, Dan and Brad to say, hey, this is what's out there in technology world. So. Mm -hmm. And it is hard. It's hard to focus on one or two things. It really is. It is because you you know you mentioned like that you posting this and that, and I've gone to on different site visits and everybody's using something different. And sure. I always want to go. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna try that, and then I, I feel like. But I which one fits you? I have that, technology right? ADD, yeah. and yeah. it's not. <laughs> and that's what, and, and that's <laughs> why I do too. I mean, I was going to the Matt and the call, and I was doing all these, you know, talking to other teachers and going I was listening to people talking like. Which one's best for me? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, which one do I? Which one fits me? Mm -hmm. And I just said, I'll pick one, going with it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, Pat, that uh, is a struggle. Though. I, I feel for you. Yeah. Oh, I know, <laughs> definitely. Patrick, what did you um, discover or think about as a challenge um, for you related to? Um, they sound a little sick. I gotta yeah. say, your bells are a little sick. Everybody says that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm six to get quieter. Oh, I'm new to it now. So. <laughs> My big thing is looking at your classes. How do you handle testing? Because, um, like you said, I'm ahead of the curve in terms of testing. And you're still the new data director, and we just want to go with your eyes out. Um, it's going away though. Yeah, but then it's going to be it's by something else. Yeah, right there, part two. So, um, how do you handle the testing with classrooms? Do you still use paper? Because we're in a huge like don't print anything because you have computers and so. Um, I just was because I really struggle with I, some kids need to look at A, B, and C and D and say okay it's not A, it's not D, Cross so right it's off, B and right. C. And then they need to start and go through the rest. And with technology, it's made it so it's like. What I, and that's a great one, because that did come up about two years ago. Um, as at a conference somewhere, and most teachers talking about the same thing. And so I came up with the hey, I got to think about this. That was a good question. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm smart enough, I can figure this out. What I did is I did Google Forms um, for multiple choice. And then I said, get a piece of paper, put number one, write down the ones that aren't. B, out. C, out. Okay, C, A, or D. Mm -hmm. So then that was their paper part of it. Um, but I think, I mean, you know, I think our culture here is changing now. You don't even see kids doing it anymore. They just feel so comfortable with going. Because I'm thinking about so many kids who need to touch it and to yes. be able to. Because, yeah. like, even when I'm looking at a, like my screen sometimes, I'm like, hold on, take a break and go back to it and right. get, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know what I do too is that I try. For sixth grade especially, I know you got a different eighth grade plus in high school. I try to keep things so limited, um, maybe just two choices, three choices sometimes, that I don't want to overwhelm them. Mm -hmm. Because then they do get uh, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, O, I don't know which one it is. Yeah. Now that, that's, a, that's a great question. It is. There's four. It's <laughs> Yeah, maybe we could look at some of your tests at one point in time. Sure. So I can see how they're. Sure. That's what I'm kind of struggling with. Is okay. I got my administrator wants me to do this, but is this really the best for the kids? Or is this right. the best for them? You know, so. Sure. Plus, we don't know yet what accommodations on the the new online assessments will be allowed. Yeah. We we are not all the way certain on will they have that cross out capacity? Will they have highlight capacity? Will they have varying shade? Or well, you know, you're talking about so. accommodations too. I ran into a little bit of that issue with my kids are full up for special ed. Yeah. You know, they, the teacher needs to read it to them, they need to just have all this, yeah. I ran that issue too. Yeah. Um, because what some of our teachers are doing is they'll give you the test booklet, and then um, online it will have question number one, and that's A, B, C, D. So they have to look for number one, okay, you just hit A, B, C, D. and then they, then they cross it off, and then they have to put a computer, question number one is B. So it's just like filling out old Scantron. Yeah, but, exactly. say, but then some kids were like, okay, they would circle B, and then we go back down their computer, and they wrote C. And like, How's that? Right. And it's just stuff like that happens. And like, I hate that there's that yeah. huge robot. Because, yeah. I mean, it's, I think what happens once, it happens twice. That's a good point, so. though. That is a great point. Very good challenge. You've seen um, a lot of research. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I've seen go a ahead. lot of research about how reading, we teach our kids to read books, we teach our kids to read articles and things like that, all on paper. But when they read online, they don't read books. Just automatically translate them into those skills. Right. And that's one of the things that they need to do. Right. They don't just automatically transfer those skills. Correct. So I think that's something that 
that all teachers at Harvard need to be very aware of as we switch over to, to online assessment because it's not the same. We haven't been teaching it right. at all. So I don't, we're, t we're doing the paper pencil on stuff this year. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess we've got a reprieve, but I don't know how to get that out in the open. So anyway, yeah. you know. I think that's a great challenge to present as well. You know, well, you know, I think that, especially at the high school level, <laughs> they're a couple years away from doing this stuff at college. Mm -hmm. and it's a, I mean, colleges aren't backing off. You know, Here it is, go. It's well documented by research that we read 25% slower online than yeah. what we do. In I know, college. I do. 25% slower. So what would you expect our first online assessment results to look like, right? Mm -hmm. And so then there's that challenge of how do you no. teach that online reading component or whatever. One last thing we'll do about it. And if the emergency you can highlight the next comments. And so that's that's the most online version of the hard skills that we're teaching on paper to be able to share a document, look at it. Everyone can highlight it together. I can see what you highlighted, you can see what I highlighted, something like that. So, but, well, the, the, with testing um, and you know, having AP seniors in high school, I started with technology, putting my tests online, mm -hmm. and so that students with using Moodle could retest. But this year I did have, um, and I never, I should have asked, I never asked, but I just assumed that they're all going to take it online and that's the end of it. But I did have one student um, by our first exam, she said, I really, could you just print this test out yeah. for me, please? And so for her, now I print the test out, but that's one out of 85, you know, kids sure. that I have. So um, that seems to work pretty well for her. So that's just the, the one person. Well, you have to do a big accommodation. Yes. I mean, yeah. We're teachers here for the kids and make them access to that's what we can. And it's training. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. No problem. It's It'll take me just ever to grade it, but. <laughs> What other challenges, Andrea, do you see or relate to? Um, I, you would also mention like keeping kids on task. And again, it's probably having older students, yeah. but um, you know they come in and instead of popping up Google Classroom or popping up Weebly, they pop up the news while they drink their coffee. Eventually, the news. I was gonna say news. Mine are popping up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or sports. It's you know news or sports. So. So that's a constant sure. challenge for me is, you know, look over here for a minute, you guys. Just let's <laughs> redirect it this way, please. And right. It's it's ongoing. So you and me teach it too. Yeah, I have great students, mm -hmm. awesome, wonderful kids. Yeah. But it's never ending. Yeah. <laughs> please excuse the students coming from Mrs. Schmidt's class. They had to finish up some stuff. Um, I was using Schoology last year and I created an assignment and I said, you need to answer these two questions. First this one, then this one. Half the kids only answered the first question. <coughs> the rest of them, like the second question was completely ignored. So it, it comes back to, you know, you ask them a question in writing, online, and they don't know what to do. So I, I'm, I'm curious to know what maybe if you have any suggestions or if you have any ideas. Like, how do you, how do you deal with that? Because I explained it, I stopped the class, I re-explained it, I took over their computers in land school, I highlighted it, I said there are two things you're going to do. One, you're going to put a one there, you're going to answer this question. Two, you're going to put a two there, you're going to answer I got one, two, and then like half an answer. So I don't know if it was my lack of expectations or I just wasn't putting on directions again. But what, like, is it just, it's not I think that, I think they're a little overwhelmed at first when they, when they first get online, they're like, uh, it's like when you're a little kid, you go to a candy store, or mm -hmm. a toy store, like, oh yeah, yeah. I, th I, just, I literally feel like they get so excited, they're just like, ah, and they kind of spaz out, and they're like, look at this kid's computer, look at this kid's computer, and I just think they just lose focus, I really do. <laughs> So what, do you, so what do you do, just rep, repetition? You repetition, know, maybe yep. the solution? Because this couple is the second ago, time they've done it. A couple years ago I struggled with that, um, but then I, and honestly, I started marking it down. Mm -hmm. yeah. I literally started to mark. I'm like, hey, this, you know, it's half done. I'm not gonna buy a car it's half done. Mm -hmm. Think about it, people. And they, so then their, their parenting, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, I thought it's pushed back from parents. Yeah. I'm like they didn't do it. Here it is. Mm -hmm. 
Two questions, simple. They didn't do it. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying about Google Forms and thinking about is it won't let you submit unless you Activity you can correct. require questions. Mm -hmm. And what I also found too is there's an option for a progress bar at the bottom. Yeah. So if you can it's not all the way done, then you know that it's not right. all the way done. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're on phase yeah. one of the three. It's <laughs> not more. Yep. Wonderful. Well, I thank everybody so much for participating in this conversation. We've spent about an hour um, on the conversation, the post facilitator conversation. Before we go ahead and wrap up, um, we want to, is there um, anything else anybody would like to add about today's observation? Just general comments that wasn't a success or a challenger, but just anything that anybody wants to? I wish we had more opportunities. I'm saying we as almost all educators more opportunities to do this stuff because mm -hmm. it's, it's so helpful. Well, to see good your for, kids who it's are good for me because I'm hearing from different counties, different <laughs> levels, high school, yeah. eighth grade, elementary, mm -hmm. you know, not even a, I mean, you're Spanish or something, right? It's right there. It's in the neighborhood. So, I mean, it's something that's not really a core subject. Right, yeah. I mean, so it's kind of good to hear from, like you said, nice to hear from all aspects, all corners mm -hmm. of it. And I love that you know, all of us can find something in your sixth grade. Oh, right. all in common, right. It yeah. will be useful oh, to yeah. us. Yeah. Sure. So I just want to wrap up by saying we're all going to exchange emails again so we can feel free to continue the conversation with your colleagues. Developing this professional network is a big component of um, the teacher exchange program. And then also, one last thing before we leave, um, you know, we, we talked about we saw a great integration of QR codes today, and you picked that up from somewhere. Is there any PD that anybody wants to talk about or something that you've seen, maybe not even with QR codes, but with Google Classroom? Any recommendations for anybody here on stuff to go do or see for continued professional learning that you can think of that you've done in the last year, the last... You need to be on Twitter. Twitter, and yeah. Twitter. Um, the Michelle chat Wednesday nights. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Rockstar Teacher Camp, if it comes back, go. Like, go. You know where I get a lot of my stuff is Google Plus. I follow some communities on there. I get a lot, a lot of stuff from there. I learn a lot from those communities. And they're great to pose a question. I mean, I usually have five or six people right now answering that. So, something to think about, too. I feel like we're lucky in, in Michigan, also in Jackson County. They, at the ISD, great professional development conference. Yeah, I, yeah, I do feel yeah. Jump in there. Right on cue. April 18th. Give me some bucks later. Oh, April, yeah, yeah.